Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies, news and events in the healthspan field that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. We have three recent papers to look at this week. The first of these is from a team at Kobe University who are looking for a cheaper way to manufacture NMN. If you're using NMN as an NAD booster, I'm sure that you are aware that it is quite expensive. The team developed a procedure using E. coli bacteria with some gene editing which allowed them to make NMN from two inexpensive inputs, namely glucose and nicotinamide. The bacteria were engineered to use NAMPT to convert NAM to NMN and then excrete this out of the cell. In the lab, they showed that the strain produced 6.79 grams per litre of NMN from glucose and NAM with a reaction selectivity of 86%. And as they say, the approach will be promising for low-cost, high-quality industrial production of NMN and other nucleotide compounds using microorganisms. A cheaper NMN would allow a wider population of users to benefit from its effects. Here is our second paper, which looks at how NMN supplementation can help prevent liver fibrosis. Liver fibrosis is a reversible wound healing response to acute or chronic injury that can progress to cirrhosis or cancer. Common causes of liver fibrosis are non-alcoholic fatty liver and alcohol-related diseases. It is caused by the HSCE, or hepatic stellate cells, becoming activated and generating scar tissues in the liver. NMN activates 15 PGDH, an enzyme in the liver, which in turn downregulates prostaglandin E2 and helps to inactivate the HSCs and to stop the formation of the scar tissue in the liver. This was a study in mice, but as in the summary, the authors say that the NMN supplementation could be a new therapeutic approach for liver fibrosis prevention. As someone who likes to have a glass of wine in the evening, it is encouraging to see that my NMN supplementation may be doing double duty, both in boosting my NAD levels and in protecting my liver. And the last paper this week is a review of four age clocks and how they do in predicting age-related phenotypes and all-cause mortality. From the title, we can see that Grim Age Clock did the best. The paper for the Grim Age Clock was published in January 2019 by a team from Dr. Horvath's lab, led by Dr. Ake Lu. The team looked at 88 plasma proteins as biomarkers and compared them to methylation at CPG sites. From this, they identified 12 with the best correlation. They trained this on the Framingham Heart Study data to determine an estimated time to death based on the values of the DNA methylation. This study looked at four clocks to see how they predicted a number of physical and mental abilities, along with all-cause mortality. The clocks they looked at were Horvath's original clock and the Hannum clock, which we can call Generation 1 clocks, and the Phenoage and Grim Age clocks. They showed that the Horvath and Hannum clocks did not have good predictability. While the Phenoage was better, it did not have good predictability after being adjusted for other social and lifestyle factors. However, the Grim Age clock predicted 8 out of 9 outcomes in minimally adjusted models and remained a significant predictor of free, including mortality, when fully adjusted. The results show that the Grim Age is a step improvement on the previous clocks in predicting age-related decline, which could help with personalised precision medicine. Next, to our interesting news corner. Axiom Space, a company run by former manager of NASA's part of the space station, announced that it had signed a contract with SpaceX, Elon Musk's rocket company, for what might be the first fully private human spaceflight to orbit. In fact, as soon as next year, there are three passenger slots available aboard a spaceship to the International Space Station for a 10-day stay. A ticket to the International Space Station currently runs to 55 million and according to Axiom, it has already signed up one person. Yet getting people safely to space is just one step. Getting them there and back again healthy is another. Scientists have known that space travel seems to accelerate aging. Some of the detrimental health effects are reversible once space travelers are back in the grasp of gravity, while others linger. On November the 25th, there was a paper published looking at the health effects of spaceflight and how the mitochondria are affected. To start, they tapped into health data from 59 astronauts 
and hundreds of other tissue samples that have flown into space. It's a comprehensive data set containing everything from genes to proteins to metabolism. The authors said they were looking at problems in the liver and they saw that they were caused by pathways related to mitochondria. When they looked at the problems in the eyes, they saw the same pathways. They found mitochondrial dysregulation as a central hub for space biology. For the solution of mitochondrial dysfunction, one option to slow or curb mitochondrial problems is through diet. The energy factory needs food to be able to produce energy. So what space travelers eat makes an impact on their health. The other is pharmaceutical interventions. The strongest candidate mentioned in the paper is coenzyme Q10, an antioxidant used to batch, battle cellular pollutants and a favorite component in anti-aging skincare. The author mentioned that the next step will be testing with animal and cell models in space. In fact, my wife and I have started taking the ubiquinol active form of CoQ10 from last month for our blood vessels and heart health. You can find our supplement list in the description. We shall talk in more detail about CoQ10 in a future video. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the Modern Health Span newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter. Please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.